So we're going to go through. Now, I always say this at the beginning. You should never start with an apology. However, we're not going to get into content in this session. It is absolutely focused on your ability to collaborate as fully as you can using the digital kit. Um, so that's the idea. So if when we're going through, you think, oh, well, actually, how would I use this in a specific circumstance or scenario? That's what we'll be covering later. So it's just a reminder, it is a, an orientation. There are the three of us uh, plus me, and we try to keep it small groups because uh, I can give you kind of that attention and handhold you through. It's kind of in my best interest and yours that you end this session with a level of confidence that you can go into the board. So when Andrea and Tunch give us some prompts and some content later, you can think, oh, I'm going to drag on a team symbol. I want to drag on a challenge symbol. So that's the purpose of this 30 minutes. And we'll work at whatever pace we will. If anyone gets stuck or needs help, we stop and we do that. And that's why um, that's why maybe we'll move at whatever pace you're comfortable and familiar with. So let's get started. We've got a list of things I'd like to get through. But as I said, the pace is really set by us. So if you have any issues at any point, just shout out, your mics are open and we'll stop and we'll help you. And actually one of you might help each other, which is a kind of a big picture thing that we all kind of chip in. Um, I know it pretty much inside out. So sometimes I have that curse of knowledge. Sometimes you helping each other out is more powerful. That makes better sense. So um, to start with, I've just technically to get you started, I sent you an email, it was about a quarter to and it would have looked something like Martin Johnson is sharing a, a board with you. So the first thing is, have you located the email? Yes, Jenny? Just checking on Jenny. No, there should be an email, Jenny. So for Robin and Sue, who've got the email, and I think Sue, you might have been in the uh, board before. Um, if you click on that email and just follow the instructions through, I think you've got a slightly different use case because, Sue, I think you've got a board, uh, a login already. And the aim of this step is to just get through to the dashboard, which is where you see the, the boards. You should only see one uh, board, the one I've shared with you. So, Robin, if I um, help you through, have you been, you've got I'm the in. email and you're able to click through? I'm in. Grand. The best thing I can hear early on in the orientation, our phrase is like, <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. Puzzled looking faces and go in. Where's the email? Oh no, it's gone into spam. Not as enjoyable. Words like mm. I'm in, incredibly good. So Robin, full points for that. Thank you. Jenny, you're having a little bit of issue with sound, but you're I think on. I've got it now. I can't. I'm there twice, hey! Um, <laughs> I, I love can't it get when it's on. like there's something about modern day now having Jenny twice on screen. It's just <laughs> it's not causing me any issues. I'm just going to go with it, but it looks like I've got two Jennies who are cloned. I'll, I'll take one off. Start moving. No, it's fine. I like it. When you start moving <laughs> differently on each camera, that's when I'm going to get worried. Um, and I'll be thinking, am I in some kind of Truman Show film. Anyway, we must get on. I am incredibly distractible and mischievous, so I only need a little bit of encouragement and off I go. We must stick to the agenda. So um, if you're in, when, when you go to the dashboard, so Jenny, I'm bringing you along. You should get to a point where you're in what's called the dashboard. That's when you know you've cleared the login. Yeah, I, I was in there earlier. I'll Grand, brilliant. So if you're in the dashboard, it, this is a little bit more difficult for me this step because my dashboard has got lots of boards in it. So I have to remember your dashboard has probably just got two boxes, one to the left saying create board. And we're going to come back to that later. And to the right, you should see the board that I've shared with you, which is fondly called DigiKit Orientation 15 to the first. We're going to come back to what the Corgan thing means underneath. But for now, you'll see a little thumbnail, which hopefully is drawing you in. So if you click on the thumbnail to go into the board, you'll see your screen refresh and some weird looking symbols come up that you've probably not seen before. So you'll be like, what is this all about? Are you all into the board? Yeah. Grand, that's really good, good start. So I'm gonna show you a few things. Um, firstly, this is all our boards. It's not a board each. So we're all in the same board. So 
if you you might want to in the bottom left just zoom out a little bit so in the bottom left there's a little zoom button i'm just going to click minus minus and take me down to 60 percent now on my setup here that means i can see the whole board <clears throat> and there's a big picture thing to that which is if you see on the wall behind me the physical version of big picture it's a bit like you and I walking up close to an area of the big picture board and then coming back from it. But when you move the zoom, it doesn't change anybody else's because I think it's really important through this. I'm in no way really special in this board. We've all got equal dibs. We've all got a voice. That's why the mics are all open. And we've all got the ability to move things. So simply, if I move my mart symbol, if I'm saying in this business, uh, and this is kind of the big picture approach, it's like a visual way of seeing the business i call it an operating model because i'm a business analyst but for the people we want to engage with they could call it anything they want we might just say to them oh mart i can see that you think you work in delivery which is why hopefully you can see i've moved my team symbol into delivery very quick orientation of the board it's designed to be as straightforward as possible you'll notice at the top there's a purpose um at the left, I'll just share screen on this one so the recording can see it and then I'll turn it off. That's not the main purpose of this, but I'll just give them a sense. Um, the layout of the board is such that we've got the purpose at the top um, up here and that text that we can change and we might have a conversation about. You put some core values left and right, so it's just getting our eye in. Across the middle, your eyes might be drawn to the customer journey. Really important part of a business to know your customer journey. So the yellow line running left to right. And if you see the yellow symbol, that's the customer. Um, it's laid out with delivery, the kind of operational area, the stuff that creates the value in the center of the, the board. And then hopefully intuitively, marketing and sales to the left, customer care to the right, relationships in the form of partners and suppliers at the top, management and administration at the bottom. All I've done in a few years of doing this with different teams is have attempted to pare down and simplify business conversations so that more people can get involved and you'll see a term like dot joining the dots are in a sense the uh, the symbols that we're talking about here so i've moved myself on i'm really keen for you to get on the board and me to stop jabbering on so you'll notice a spanner um thing here on the left hand side and and if you do get confused with me sharing screen and your version, please don't. I'll stop sharing in a sec once I've seen one or two of you come on the board. If you click in your spanner uh, icon, you'll see the resource draw pull out. This is a bit like a stationary cupboard. It's where you go to get your stuff. Now, if you just look on camera for now, I've got a physical symbol here, which is the red team symbol. And you'll notice this is the same symbol on the object, the resource draw and what i'd like you to do is to just drag holding down the left key drag one of the team symbols on and this is going to be you and you can place it anywhere you wish and then we can refine that so if you just drag one in as i've done here i'll stop sharing the screen at this point just so i don't confuse you i've just, just before i do that i can see some of you coming on which is great and i'll just stop sharing so I've seen three appear, so unless one of you has done it twice just to kind of trick me, and uh, doesn't feel like a mischievous group to me, so I think that's three. Interesting you put them in relationship. It's interesting they've landed there, and I'll think about that later. Um, but what I want you to do is make that team symbol your own. So the way I do that, again, I'll share the screen, is I will just show you how to do that. Oh, Jenny, could you explain how you've just done that? Uh, I double clicked on it and then four green boxes come up and I pressed on the pencil to edit. I thought that was it. And then just uh, wrote my name. Hopefully that's OK. Well, I'm checking my CRM, see if you've been through this before. Because you I sent, didn't. You sent something. How did you know how to do that? You sent me something. Did I? Oh, my goodness. That's good. Or, or you said have you said have a play around with it so i did so quite Absolute. noisy hey jenny that's brilliant <laughs> something big picture thing has happened there which is you doing that delights me and as the agenda and the meetings flow and we join more symbols together we love that energy and that connection that's what big picture is all about which is why i focus on it embrace it because you being able to do that is really good so 
Robin and Sue. Um, Robin's done that. And Sue, have you been able to change a name on it, Sue? We'll just let Sue catch up a little bit. And I think so. Yes. There we are. Thanks, Sue. Now, move you, Robin and Sue, move yourself. It's just a made up organization. It doesn't have to be one in particular, it's just an orientation. Move yourself. So, Robin's gone into, I can see Robin thinks he works in marketing. Jenny's gone into the kind of partner place of relationships. And Sue's gone into delivery. So, already you might see a little dynamic forming, and the penny might be dropping that you're demonstrating to the rest of us where you see yourself you're not necessarily a tag or a, a role name or a title we don't really think like that it's very much where do you see yourself and you can have a bit of fun with that because sometimes people's role names don't always line up with where they see themselves particularly if you change the language to something like where do you see yourself adding most value in the organization so if I'm tagged as an operations director and people see me in management, I might actually place myself close to the customer journey, which is me giving a bit of a message. I might be a bit of a hands-on kind of operations director. But if you watch, if I go down here, I might be giving you the message. I'm more of a management, uh, a little bit less, uh, a bit more removed and almost a little bit administrative in the way that I work in some way. So there's a few different angles you can play on it. It's, it's not necessarily yeah, a that. mind trick, uh, it's not me. but That's a me. way of finding people. <laughs> how to do it. Okay, yeah, just closing yeah. a little bit. Uh, there he is. Yeah, you're back now. It's interesting because I've got fibre broadband now and I don't normally have uh, lock lockups like that. So hopefully the children, uh, I've got three teenagers, so hopefully they're not mucking about uh, with the router. Uh, so I might have to get in, <laughs> run in after them in a minute. Right. So hopefully you got that. Where you place yourself in the organization is is really mm. good to find out. So you could, what I might ask is if you go back into the spanner drawer and um, pull out another symbol that makes sense to you, something that you care deeply about. So is it, are you more of a customer person? Are you more about technology? Are you about measures? Is money your thing? Are you about processes? And maybe do you see yourself as a challenge or an opportunity type person? It's a bit like the six thinking hats thing. Which symbol do you think you could make an association with? And just to get into the practice, pull on a symbol and put it next to you. Um, it makes a connection for the first. Fast anywhere. And, and like you say, um, Jenny, there's a tractor that actually then takes another 20 yeah, minutes. Or a sheep. Yeah. Oh, hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. Hello. Sorry, we, we just no, that's all right. It's brilliant for the recording because we'll get to find oh, out. Yeah, oh, I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, I think Martin's great. It was Jenny that said. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't wait to watch about this recording. I don't believe Jenny for a moment. Absolutely wonder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely. Try. I don't even know what Zoom does in those situations. So I've jumped to a, a mobile connection for some reason. My internet's dropping out, so it might be to do with the weather. Apologies for that. So we're still kind of we've got a nice tidy board in front of us. Um, I was asking you to bring on. I don't know if you heard. Just bring on another symbol. We might. We can bring on any of the symbols. Any of the symbols that make sense to you. We don't need to dwell on it. It's just the fact. I want you to get into the the idea or the practice of thinking connecting yourself with symbols so I might say I'm the kind of uh, manager who's really into money so I brought on money and placed it next on uh, next to me Jenny's brought on a challenge um, Sue and Robin you could bring on symbols that makes mean something to you and therefore we might have a conversation around that in terms of what the symbols mean hopefully the way the symbols are, are named are is fairly self-explanatory to you so there's nothing overwhelming or too, uh, that needs too much explanation. The symbols are chosen to be that straightforward. These What's are all... interesting, Martin, is I've, put, I've put two symbols up and they're not on your screen. Interesting. Let me just, that might be because of that That's internet good. dropped out, yeah. Robin. Uh, I went for, it's just because well spotted. Um, yeah, so a bit, that, that's really good, I think, because the internet dropped out. So Robin's brought on technology challenge. Obviously, we can have a conversation about it. We won't do that now because it's technical orientation. The idea is you are inviting your audience, your participants to think for themselves, make and do, make connections, really important. So we've covered that. So we're going to whiz through some other um, symbols now, other bits of functionality. Now, if you click on that right-hand side, if you click on that clock uh, symbol there, you, I can see you've been active. 
And if I wanted to see how well the class behaved when I wasn't with you, obviously I can think, oh, loads of collaboration. Oh, you got talking about tractors and snow and stuff. It's, it's that kind of insight. So that's the history. That's the way, uh, that's why we use the history up there. We were yeah. all from different organisations. So well, I'm hoping it... it'll help me because I'm 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 in defence. I'm in a government organisation, so you know it's it'd be good because a lot of this terminology I don't tend to use. You know, we don't yeah. have. I mean, we do have customers, and that's what I'm trying to do at the moment is trying to put this into my thought processes. So it'll be really good for me, actually. We Excellent. don't do sales, for example. I'm back and clearly oh, the message back. landed. Yeah, I'm really sorry about this. It's really disruptive. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. I, no, I'm it's all right. It's fine. What happened in, in my absence is you've made some connections and you've started dragging on things. So that that's brilliant. And we could go into that uh, as part of the session and we will probably practice this later. I was just showing you as I froze, if you click on that clock icon on the right, you can see who's been doing what. That updates and refreshes. Um, the one above here, the opportunities draw. If you were to drag on an opportunity, I don't know if anyone wants to do this whilst I'm talking. If you click on the opportunity and change the text of the opportunity symbol on the board, it will update the opportunity, it will pre populate it and add it into the opportunities draw on the right. So I can see an opportunity is being added. And then if you want to change the wording on one of those opportunities, it's important we change the wording so we can see how the ordering works. So if someone just changes that and hopefully it'll refresh um, on screen. There we are, Bristol expansion. Now, here's one for you, Sue. If you think Bristol exp expansion, and I don't know why I think that, was that a Jenny one? Have I read you're from Bristol? Have I made something up? Uh, Is that a Robin one? I'm from Bristol, yeah. I don't know why you see a little connection there. So, Sue, so we're gonna help. Um, Jenny out, <clears throat> Jenny out, because we think her idea is really good. So could you, could you go into the opportunities draw and bump off recognition, recognition rethink off the top just by using those eight grey squares and just drag it up to the top for me? Oh, I'm lost now, Marty. Where are so, we looking? Yeah. So if anyone wants to help Sue out, they can or I can. Somebody's in there, I think. So I'm in there at the moment. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you know where the little clock was, Sue? When we were yes. looking, right, so above the clock was a little light bulb. Oh, so you close that and, okay. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, got it. That's so you nice. wrote, somebody who, I did recognition rethink. I don't know who's did Bristol expansion. I, I did. Okay, and which one, Martin, do you want to drag to the top? No, I think we've done it, Jenny. Thank you. There's, oh, uh, as long as I see it moving. I moved it uh, back again. No, no, it's lovely. Now, if you can imagine, we don't need to dwell on this. From um, if you've run sessions, and I don't know all your backgrounds, however, I know, I guess you run run sessions in your own way. You could facilitate this as an open conversation about could somebody please move what they think is the most important to the top, or give everyone a go is basically it. You can make up your own voiceover. The technology platform allows a very open. It's less about control. It's more about moving around and it moves it on everyone's board so that that's the opportunities draw just one more thing whilst we're in board is if you go up to that what's called a hamburger which is top left there's we're not going to go to the dashboard yet but you can export a pdf for yourself so because big picture is a moving target um a lot of the time and it's quite fluid if you want to take a snapshot in time you do that via exporting a pdf so you could do that at the start of the meeting, the end of the meeting. You could then attach it to any minutes or put it on a Google folder or Teams or whatever. But it creates a static PDF of it. So we're going to we're going to move off off the board. Is everybody OK with what we've done in the board so far? Is everyone? Feel Martin, like... Do you find that the board can be a distraction in the sense that that when you're actually trying to uh, facilitate a very specific discussion you've got people moving stuff on and off and uh, uh, do you find that or do you I don't I find the opposite and this might be a little bit controversial but it's a great question I think people are going to fiddle and multitask and parallel think anyway 
Yeah. And it's a bit like the lecturer saying to their class, play on your gadgets and phones or whatever you want or your tablets. And in some way, whatever you're doing on there, make it relevant to what we're talking about. So it's acknowledging an observation of mine, which is we're going to fiddle and multitask anyway. Yeah. And I like yeah. to attract that. And that might be a bit odd. And if you feel that's wrong, that's fine. It's a discussion. But we encourage, and I can see stuff going on on the board now. I'm so I'm totally comfortable with it. You'll see in the group later, everyone moving at different pace and spinning different plates. I'm totally comfortable with it. As right. long as who's running it can then funnel, I call that emergent thinking. And then you use focus on the opportunities draw to bring it back. So yeah. hopefully that it might not be the question you were expecting, Sue, but it is a bit different in that respect. No, it's great. That's a great answer. Keeps everybody's focus. Yeah. Get yeah, that. absolutely. It, yes, it does. But I have to say, I've got a few members of staff who are dyslexic could find that really distracting and they wouldn't sure. like that at all. So it's just interesting. interesting. You yeah. might need to like, like pair that pair that point down then and, and single thread it or take the board yeah. away whilst you discuss something and then say, and yeah. what does that mean to the board? I, I use the sim I use the I used a, a different board yesterday. I ran a, a session for about four hours. Mm. Um, and we were doing some um, uh, looking at the strategic priorities and working out through the, through an action plan. Um, and we literally had a had a um, a board up for about four hours. And what I found was it actually worked really well, providing we were very focused in what we were doing. And the second thing was that uh, we were doing it through Zoom and we set everybody up as pairs in Zoom in their own little meeting rooms. So they had very specific tasks or questions. It might be in the same question or the same task. Um, yeah. But that way it kept really tight control and anybody who was having any technical challenges, um, that, may, you know, that may be dyscalculia or dyslexia or dysgraphia or something else, um, everybody was supported. Mm. and it worked really well and people came out at the end and they said yeah that was absolutely amazing I didn't think we could do that remotely but boy am I shattered <laughs> yeah and that, that peeling down would really help the people I'm thinking of you know that yeah. sort of <clears throat> interesting so I yeah. think the the options there for it to be as open and flexible the, put it this way the, the controls in that respect are not built into the software it's for us to facilitate through our voiceover mm. if that's not too pithy answer um, mm. I've just done something on screen which is a technique that I use is if we are talking about Jenny from Bristol and the recognition rethink and the challenge and the Bristol expansion and the measure we would potentially either take it off screen or you can zoom in and focus in the, like the way the graphics are rendered it creates almost a billboard backdrop for the mm. conversation and you obviously it's still fully functional um but it's zooming in on a bit so the graphics are intended to be as clear and crisp as we can so i'm just going to take you into the the hamburger we can go back to the dashboard um and i'll just voice over this bit so i'm not not confusing you so uh, yeah, Robin. That's right. I've, I've worked it out. I just wondered how, when you zoomed right in, you navigated, but you used the bottom left hand. Back. Ah, yes. Well spotted. There's the plus and minus in the zoom, but there's also the the crosshair or the box, so you can kind of move it around. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. So it works on as many devices as we wish. Going into the dashboard. So so far, you've worked on my board. So this is where you fly solo for a little bit, and we might just go a few minutes over nine thirty. So if you do need to drop off, you can. It's just due to the internet connectivity. We've got a less than five minutes to go on the orientation. You've used my board so far, but I want to leave you with the thought that you can have your own board. So in the dashboard, if you hit create new board, which is to the left. Let's quickly share that for camera. Create board. It'll ask you for a name and just give it a board title, uh, test or whatever. And you create the board. And this takes you then back to the dashboard where you'll see it appear slightly differently. If you wonder where my funny little face comes from, uh, well, obviously from my parents, but that was a really bad joke. <laughs> they, uh, from Gravatar, um, it pulls it from there. So if you want your face to appear next to the board, if you put it's a globally recognized avatar, I think is the thing. That's where it pulls the picture from. Um, if you then click into your board, so I'm going to go back into mine, but if you go into your own board at this point, um, 
then you'll obviously see it. So you're now the master of this board and you can do what you want with it. So that's fully functional. The reason I do that is it's a fully functional board. You're now inviting people in and I'm going to show you how you invite people into your board. So the functionality is the same, whether you're working on someone else's board or your own board. So I'm going to show you where the difference comes. If you go back to the dashboard and we go into the little cog beneath the, um, the board, it just renders for a few seconds. But if you click on that little cog and sharing, there's no two places to go. It's just one place. So if you just hit that uh, cog button, you'll go into the board settings. Now, you'll notice on there that you can change the board title. Now you'll notice here, this is how you got your emails this morning. So you can be as expansive and adventurous as you wish at this point. You can put no email in at all, or if you want to play with a new toy, you could put my email in, which is martin.johnson at yourbigpick.com. Or if you're feeling incredibly adventurous, you could put someone else's email in there. Um, of a colleague or someone you want to delight on this Friday morning and say, oh, did you get that share? Your license level as you go in, everyone goes in at the, with the ability to create one board and share it with one other person. That's how it works. If you want more sharers and more boards, then that's where we have a conversation about how you can kind of use that in your work and how you can go through the different license levels for that but at the moment you'll be able to create one board and share it with one other person so if you've shared that somebody will have got an email it might be me and um, i just wanted to show you one more thing before we finish if you go in the top right there's a thing called your account and martin and it, martin, yes robin just very quickly um when you go in when i go into my board that i've yep. just set up everything's grayed out um whereas your one it's got it's got areas like part the partners ah, good really good point it took me a moment there um let me just uh, yeah let me do that because that'll help you now the way it works at the moment is you can set your board up to be as you want so you what you'll need to do is to drag on some boxes so you're no different to me this test one robin is the same it's grayed out so when it just comes up the way i set a board up is to bring on one of these boxes and actually start setting it up. So you're basically preparing the board. Now, you brought up a really important point there, which I almost forgot, so I'm really pleased you did it, which is when I run a, uh, a DigiKit orientation, if you just look at my share for now, I have what I call an underscore master board set up. Mm -hmm. So that's so I don't have to do it each time. So if yeah. you're running a particular session, uh, it's like a template or backdrop. If you're running a session in your uh, coaching or your mentoring or your training or your onboarding, you would have it set up as a starting point. And then when you go into your board settings here, what I do is I don't share that board with people because that would get a bit confusing. It's always the master. But what I do is I copy the board. Yeah. So basically that then becomes, so it's a real quick starter. Monday morning, I've got a meeting at 10. It's half past nine. Blinking head, I need to prepare that board. That's fine. I'll go to the master. I'll copy it. I'll yeah. then share it. And everyone thinks you're marvellous because you're fully prepped. So massive time service. Thanks for reminding me on that. You'll notice you have, obviously you can view board. Delete board is helpful if you want to bump along at the free license because you can keep deleting or locking and creating a new board. Hopefully you think that's a nuisance and you want to talk to me about opening that up, but that's just me and my commercial head on. Um, and you can copy board, which is what I've just talked about. And pretty much, uh, I think, oh, one more thing I was just showing you when Robin, you asked that question. If you go into your account, we've just changed this. So this is really aimed at, our licensing is aimed at, well, you can see I've got an enterprise and what's showing up for you is probably uh, Buddy. Uh, which is the yeah. lowest level that's where the conversation comes in so we're more flexible on that now so at the moment it's a conversation it's you want to use it for this let me try and help you get set up to use it for that this is how we could go in some form of licensing <clears throat> it's very moderately priced for individuals six pound twelve pound a month depending on what level you want so we might just agree for six months or a year but it's a conversation rather than a click at the moment just because of the different ways people are using it and that concludes. Martin. Yes, hello. Oh, Done. Sorry, can can anybody 
so could like my husband open this and have a look at it and of course uh, well, that, it can go, it can go yeah the unofficial answer is you can obviously go in on your account and do it from a gd i have to say from a gdpr and a security perspective that would be like sharing accounts which is sometimes not great um so yeah. what you would then do is you would share it board with own. him yeah the way to do it if you imagine a little line bumping along a graph you share it with him and suddenly he gets an account everybody you share it with gets an account like you have this morning I was thinking of, yeah. and the world okay. keeps spinning round and they can create their own board and they can basically do what we've done this morning that's the model and then as you want to use it more as one of sue's colleagues caroline is doing um they then get a license for two or three users to use at an enterprise level and then this physical kit then kicks in so i have to mention like at yourbigpick.com there are physical kits as well as digital we are not a digital I offering we that, are yeah. pushing the digital offer because of where we're working in sheds and rooms this is all physical stuff that is real and you can use like activity kits workshop kits the symbols and the board stays exactly the same you will not get bamboozled or complicated by any additional symbols. You've seen all the symbols and you've seen the board. The idea is keep it simple and accessible uh, so everybody can access it and not overcomplicate. We then apply that today for onboarding. Next time it will be for change. We go around the heptagon, which you can see on yourbigpick.com, which is change performance, learning, onboarding, strategy and finance. But the single tool stays at the center based on the fact once you activate a colleague, they are activated in different ways. They become a successful onboardee. They become a successful change practitioner. It's about a bottom up, uh, in grand terms, revolution in the way we see colleagues driving organizations or more uh, preferred organisms, like a more natural organization, not a top down hierarchy. And hopefully that's come out a little bit through our session. And I am done and I'm aware I've run over a little bit and I know we've got other stuff to do. So any other questions? Um, Mark, I'm going to have to disappear in a few minutes. Yeah. I've got a call coming in at 9.45. Yeah. Grand. I yeah, I think, I think we're done, guys. There's an orientation. How comfortable would you all be uh, later when Andrea gives you the right prompts? And that's lovely, Andrea, and Tunchy's job today give you the right prompts they might say something like you've come into the organization uh please place yourself where you see yourself i would like you to think that you can do that is that yeah, is that fair absolutely yeah and, that, and that's all we wanted to achieve so it looks like we've got a successful outcome and um i'll ask you some for some feedback later really apologize for the internet connection no, don't worry. Uh, that's no it. At all. and then we'll see you later uh, lovely to meet you all and you Bye. 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 Bye.